All right. Good morning, everyone. I'd like to remind everyone to please make sure that all cell phones are turned to the off or vibrate position. Also, please be advised our city council meetings are broadcast on television, on Comcast Channel 99, and rebroadcast on WMGJ Radio. This meeting of the Gadsden City Council will now come to order. The chair calls on City Clerk Ivan Nelson for the roll call. Councilwoman Towles? Here. Councilman Williams? Here. Worthy? Here. Eccles is absent this week. Here. Cannon. Here. And Reed. Here. We have a quorum present and our meeting is open for business. I'm going to ask Keith Williamson to leave the invocation. Please stand and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Ms. Bray, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this day. Lord. We thank you for the blessings of the day, Father. We thank you for all that you've done, promised to do, and Father, just continue to do on a daily basis. Lord, we thank you for Jesus and forgiveness first and foremost. We pray, Father, that you give us wisdom, guidance, knowledge and discernment as we carry forward in the business that's at hand. Father, we pray that we please you with all that's said and done, and we give you thanks in advance. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The chair will entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the Public Safety Committee meeting, work session, and City Council meeting held on April 25th. So moved. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor, let it be known as saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries to approve minutes. The chair will entertain a motion to ratify payment of accounts for the week of April 21st <laughs> through the 27th. So moved. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor, let it be known as saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to ratify payment of the accounts. Proclamations. Thank you, Mr. President. The mayor is out of town today, so I have the, uh, the pleasure and opportunity to uh, present my friends at Rotary on the, uh, with the proclamations. We actually have two today. Whereas the Gadsden Rotary Club was founded May 11, 1917, making it the oldest service organization in Gadsden, and whereas the Gadsden Rotary Club has made notable contributions to our community, including the Gadsden Library Park, Habitat for Humanity, Children's Hospital, Critical Care Transport, the Humane Society of Etowah County, Salvation Army, and the United Way Agency contributions and projects. And whereas the Gadsden Rotary Club has partnered local schools and the Gadsden Library to improve literacy and provide educational opportunities for all students by sponsoring an anti-bullying rally, providing dictionaries to third grade students in Etowah County, purchasing kitchen equipment for the Beautiful Rainbow Cafe, the Rotary Award for fifth grade students, establishing an interact club at Gadsden City High School, and providing scholarships for deserving students. And whereas the motto of Rotary is service above self, this motto inspires Rotarians to serve humanity beyond their local communities. Gadsden Rotarians are serving humanity through projects like Polio Plus, which strives to eradicate polio. And whereas on May 11, 2017, the Gadsden Rotary Club will celebrate 100 years of service. Now, therefore, Sherman Guyton, as mayor of the city of Gadsden, Alabama, on behalf of the city council, does hereby congratulate the Gadsden Rotary Club on its centennial and extend our appreciation for its service to Gadsden and this community. Steve was here when it began back in. But let me first recognize we have several Rotarians here today. If y'all can stand, I'd like to. Joan in the back, Bubba here is uh, our assistant district governor, and Leslie Hart taking the pictures, and Stephanie. Actually, Sherman is a Rotarian, and Bob Eccles is a past uh, Rotary president for Gadsden and Rotary Club. So, a lot of Rotarians here, and uh, appreciate the city for uh, acknowledging us with this proclamation. I invite you to uh, attend our centennial celebration May 11th at the Gadsden Country Club at lunch. 
John Merrill will be our speaker and look to have a, a good turnout. And uh, thank you for the proclamation. Steve, before you go, how does one become a Rotarian? Uh, if you'll call me, I'll be glad to make you a Rotarian. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, to, thank you to both of those groups for all of the fine work that you do in the community. I, I take pride in being uh, the, the, you know, the, the one that introduced to the mayor the first time six years ago the opportunity to, to uh, do a proclamation for the motorcycle group. So, uh, so we appreciate all that you do, and uh, we definitely enjoy having you come up every year. And uh, we do want to thank also the Rotary Club for, for their fine service. Uh, and it's always a great thing to recognize any group that's been around 100 years. Uh, I think with the exception of Mr. Eccles, nobody up here has been around 100 years. So, so we definitely appreciate, appreciate uh, their, their efforts and their work. Under unfinished business, we have item number 8A, which is an ordinance. It's amending fiscal year, the fiscal year 17 budget reflecting receipt and appropriation of a grant. This ordinance was presented last week for first reading. It relates to the $8,000 grant from the Etowah County Community Development Committee for construction of a sign identifying Bellevue Highlands to be located at the intersection of Mitchell Boulevard and Bellevue Drive. The chair will entertain a motion to adopt this ordinance. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the ordinance, let me know by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries to adopt. Item number 8B is an ordinance amending city code sections 74-233 and 74-263 regarding the back to school tax holiday. This ordinance was, was presented last week for first reading. The state changed the time from the first full weekend in August to the third full weekend of July. This will bring us into compliance with the change for this year and all subsequent years. The chair will entertain a motion to adopt this ordinance. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the ordinance, let it be known to say aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries to adopt. This is the time and place as advertised to conduct a public hearing allowing anyone to speak in opposition to or in favor of a resolution ordering abatement of nuisance on property at 24 Comnock Avenue in District 6, Connie Herring and Dennis Gladden being the last known owners. 
Is there anyone who would like to speak in opposition to this resolution? If you would, sir, if you'll come to the podium and uh, give us your name and address, please. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else who would like to speak in opposition? Does anyone wish to speak in favor? Mr. President, I'm Brian Harbison with the Building Department. We started our case in October of 2015. Been no improvements. There are no permits to improve. And we're asking today for resolution. What is the pleasure of the council? Move to adopt, please. Is there a second? Second. Okay, is there any discussion? Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries to adopt. Our next public hearing is a resolution ordering abatement of nuisance on property at 3001 Shahan Avenue in District 6, Stephanie Swindle and Homecoming's Financial Network, MERS, being the last known owners. Is there anyone who would like to speak in opposition to this resolution? Ma'am, if you would, just give us your name and address, please. How much time specifically, ma'am? Oh, 30 days. My 30 husband days. should have it to pull down. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Does anyone else wish to speak in opposition? Does anyone wish to speak in favor? Mr. President, this case involves a burned house. There was a demolition permit obtained in December, as you can see in the picture, the house has basically been brought to the ground. Um, we're asking for a resolution to abate the nuisance, but uh, during the interim, with the backlog Public Works has, we'll certainly uh, honor the uh, demolition permit by the owner and allow them to clean the property up. If that happens before Public Works gets out of there, there's nothing over the city. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Ms. Ms. Swindle, did you, did you catch all of that? Yes. Okay. All right. Great. All right. What is the pleasure of the council? Uh, move to abate. Second. Okay. Is there any discussion? Yes, ma'am. I, I go by there all the time. It don't look like it would take a lot to finish that project up there. And the more you get done, if the, if the city does beat you before you get through, the less you'd have to pay. And hopefully, you know, you'll be able to get it by yourself, get it done, and save that money. There's just been a lot going on. Mm -hmm. Fighting with the mortgage company to allow them to let me tear it down has been a nuisance and a headache in itself. And just a lot of things. But yeah. 
did you have uh, insurance on it where that the insurance company would uh, pay so much for demolition, removal yeah. of property? Uh, we had insurance on it, but they won't pay for the demolition. My husband's doing it by himself. Okay. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt a resolution, let it be known to say aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carries to adopt. This is the time and place it av as advertised to conduct a public hearing allowing anyone to speak in opposition to or in favor of resolutions assessing nuisance abatement liens against property. This is for demolition that has already been performed and we have four locations and these are items 11 through 14 on your agenda 1107 Brettwood Drive in District 3 four thousand six hundred ninety one dollars and forty cents 1329 Hill Avenue in District 3 two thousand five hundred forty one dollars and forty cents 1335 Hill Avenue in District 3 three thousand two hundred ninety one dollars and forty cents and 2310 Hill Avenue in District 6, $2,966.40. Is there anyone who would like to speak in opposition to any of these resolutions? Does anyone wish to speak in favor? The chair will entertain a motion to adopt all four resolutions. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt all four resolutions, let it be known to say aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries to adopt all four. Item number 15 is a resolution awarding bid number 3338 for HVAC replacement at the Gadsden Public Library main branch. The city engineer has recommended awarding the bid to State Line Mechanical LLC and the amount is $310,500. The chair will entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Heath, is there anything you want to add to that? Not in particular. This has uh, been a, a little while in the works, so we're excited to, to get this one done. This will replace all the HVAC units in the main library, and there are several that, uh, because of the different uses of that facility. So. Uh, once we get this passed, we hope to uh, certainly get the contract administration side done and work should begin uh, just about early summer. So hopefully we'll have some relief in there long term very soon. Okay. Thanks, Heath. All right, clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known to say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. Item number 16 is the resolution appointing members to the Design Review Board. This appoints uh, Gutierrez Gregory Hall for a term expiring June 30th, 2018, and Chris Williams and Ricky Hunter for terms expiring June 30th, 2019. The chair will entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known to say aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries to adopt. Item number 17 is a resolution authorizing agreement with JBW and T for a supplemental fee. This is for additional work to include a pedestrian signal and crosswalks at the Black Creek Parkway intersection on the widening and resurfacing project on South 11th Street. The chair will entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. So moved. Second. Okay, is there any discussion? Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known to say aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries to adopt. All right. Item number 18 is an ordinance that was pre presented today for first reading. It's regarding transportation network companies. Uh, this uh, recognizes TNCs and establishes a pr permit process with insurance and safety requirements 
for TNC companies such as Uber and Lyft. This ordinance was uh, updated after it was reviewed in last week's work session. So we'll need to get a motion to substitute. Uh, I'd like to entertain a motion to substitute the corrected ordinance. So moved. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to submit the substituted ordinance, let it be known as saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to substitute. Okay. So relative to the substituted ordinance, I'd like to present it today for first reading, and the council will vote on that next week. I'd like to uh, also entertain a motion to suspend the rules and consider this today, if we may. I object. Okay. <clears throat> so we do not have unanimous consent, and we'll hear it next week. New business. Is there any new business? Yes, I have an item for the, uh, from the engineering department concerning the Coosa Landing uh, supplement with uh, Coins and Carnegie Reynolds. Uh, I ask for unanimous consent. Uh, okay. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to consider the, or the resolution today as an item of new business, let it be known as saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Opposed. We do not have unanimous consent. Thank you. All right, department reports, boards, committees. Let's see. Jim Morning. Bennington with uh, the Parks and Recreation Department, and I did want to give a report about uh, things happening this weekend. Uh, Parks and Recreation is uh, hosting the Kids Fishing Rodeo at Miranda Park and Pond. This is from 11 a.m., I mean from 8 a.m. till 11 a.m. Uh, we provide a fishing pole, tackle, bait, and a hot dog lunch with a drink. And this is for the first 275 kids that uh, come and participate. I said this is for ages 5 to 12. Parents can assist kids but not fish themselves. This is for the children. Uh, a few other things being held in um, on Parks and Rec and City of Gadsden's facilities. Uh, for Friday night at the Downtown Civic Center, we have the Senior Dance that's 55 and up. Starts at 6.30. On Saturday at Knockville Falls uh, at the Black Creek Trails, the Gadsden Runners Club is hosting their Spring Trail 5K and Half Marathon. At the Sports Complex, we have BPA, which is Youth Baseball Tournament. Uh, at Carver Center, we have the first Saturday starting at noon. Coosa Landon, we have two tournaments uh, blasting off at First Safe Life, the American Bass Anglers and Harrison Bass Clubs. And on Sunday at Convention Hall, we have a beauty pageant from infants to 18-year-olds, and that starts around 11 a.m. Okay. And you want to talk a little bit about uh, this past weekend's event? This past weekend, I, I'm going to hold off and let Robert update okay. everybody on uh, the amazing concert that was held at Coosa Landing. Uh, he has more information on that okay. and was a uh, very instrumental in the lead. Okay. All right. Robert. Hello. I'm Ray Wetzel with the Gas Museum of Art, and today after the council meeting, I want to invite everybody over to to see the, all the changes that we have done to the museum. We have uh, updated our children's classroom and we are going to announce a list of summer camps, classes, and things we're going to offer from now on. We have uh, uh, over 70% um, increased our outreach to, to, uh, to school, local schools. And um, you can come in and walk around before you go to lunch and look at the new shows before First Friday. And uh, please come see all the good work we do there. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. I appreciate uh, the council letting me speak. I'm Kay Moore. I'm director for downtown Gadsden. Uh, we do have First Friday coming back up again. Uh, we kicked off last month again for the, month of the year 2017. This year, this month should be a big month if the weather holds. It's funny when you look at different weather forecasts, how different they can be. If you look at the weather channel, it says we've got a 50% chance of rain and it's going to be 59 degrees as a high. If you look at our local um, TV stations around here, we, it says 69 is a high with only 20% chance of rain. So 
you know, we always say we're going to, first Friday we'll go on, uh, weather permitting, and, and unless there's a bad weather, but we, we plan to have first Friday, we plan to have a great time. We've had a lot of calls, and we appreciate the support that we get from the city of Gaston. This is a great event uh, for our city. It puts our city in the spotlight around the southeast. You know, we've won different awards. Uh, twice we've won an award for, to be in the top 20 of the southeastern events. So I think that's pretty amazing. So this month we've got uh, we're, we've got the classic cars coming in. We'll have our food vendors coming in, and then we've got a great musical lineup. We've got uh, the Star Power Performing Arts at Second and Broad. We've got Damascus Road at Third and Broad. Uh, Stephen McCullough Band will be at Fourth and Broad. Uh, Alliance Quartet at Fifth, and they're always a, a good a big favorite. It's a gospel quartet. They, they from Huntsville area, but one of the guys is from here, so they always like to come down. We have a lot of people that like to come and listen to them. And then we have the Ed Howard Band at 6th and Broad. So the music's going to be great. We're going to have a lot of fun. It's going to kick off at 6 o'clock. We'll close the streets about 4.30 uh, to let everybody get in and get settled. And from 6 to 9, we'll have First Friday. At 8.30, uh, so it's got a little bit of overlap, the first summer concert series, and Jen, let me talk about this one because it's really a parks and recreation deal, but because it works so closely with First Friday, we've got uh, the Purple Masquerade, which is a Prince tribute band. This should be a, a wonderful, wonderful uh, entertainer. I think it's going to be something that's really, really great. We're really excited about that. So it's going to kick off and go from 8.30 to 10.30. So if you're not already tired when you leave first Friday, you can, there's another, and, and at the amphitheater, there's another, uh, another event that you can do there. You can bring your cooler and your dinner and just sit back and relax and, and enjoy that. So that's going to be this coming Friday night, May 5th, and it's going to start at 6, and it'll be over at 10.30 if you take in everything that you can. Now the next weekend, while I'm here, I'm going to take a little, another minute or two to talk about our Gad About Art. We've got about 20 artists that are going to be setting up on the streets, on Broad Street, uh, from 10 o'clock to 4 o'clock on Saturday, May 13th. This is the day before Mother's Day. We've got a good variety of painting, of metal artworks, woodwork, a lot of different things. So the artists will be set up and we'll be able to, you'll be able to uh, come and talk to them. So we'll be performing their crafts as they set, as they set up on the, on the sidewalks too. So we hope you'll come out and, and hear them and just enjoy them. Shop at our local boutiques. It is Mother's Day the next day. It gives you a great opportunity to buy that last minute gift that you've forgotten. So, but our restaurants will be open and we just, we just want another, another way to bring people downtown. You know, we want to be an artsy community. We're trying really hard, and Ray's still here, and Ray has helped a whole lot with this. And uh, we want we want people to recognize downtown, or recognize Gaston itself as a place that you can come and do a lot of different things. So this is just another one of those uh, things that we're going to have, and we hope that people will come out and shop and enjoy and just stroll our streets downtown and, and have a good time. All right. Any questions? No. And again, just if you want to touch on this past weekend for just a second, okay? I, nope. You're gonna leave. I'm okay. going to let Robert do that. All right. I'm going to let Robert do Come that. Come on up, so Robert. He's the one. But, yeah, I'm going to go sit down there and let him do that. All right. Thanks, Kay. <laughs> Thank you, Kay. We're waiting on Robert, you, Robert. Let's go. Up. Okay. more often I'd be a little more familiar with programs. <laughs> My name is Robert Smith. I'm an insurance agent in the insurance facilities and also a downtown guest and board member. I'd like to thank all of you for the time today to, to make this address because there's some people that need some big recognition in this city. Uh, just over six months ago, Mr. Steve Gilbert came to me with the idea of a concert, he called me in his office and he said, I think it's time that we did another concert here. I said, you're crazy. But he said, do you think we could have one downtown? I said, well, if we got enough money, we can do anything. <laughs> within three weeks, we had gotten with Kay Moore and Mr. Gilbert within three weeks had raised enough money to fund the concert, all from donors from within this community and around the city. We went ahead and signed contracts with Anna Popovich, our headliner. Then became the tough part where we're going to have this concert. Our initial thought was to have it downtown on the street of Broad Street. In meeting with Mayor Sherman Guyton, Frankie Davis, Shane Ellison, we changed the venue. We thought what a perfect time to tie this in with the boardwalk ribbon cut. So we did. 
They were very instrumental in pulling all the departments together to help make this happen. Public safety. My first meeting after we decided on the date and the venue was with Chief Carroll. Chief Carroll said, I think this is a great idea, but I've got some big concerns. I had a little heart skip because I knew we had a contract already going. He immediately said, relax, we got this, we'll figure it out. And we did. Gas and Police Department, my first meeting was with Captain Keener, also Lieutenant Hammonds. Again, we've got some concerns, but we'll figure it out. And we did. The Etowah County Sheriff's Department came in with help from internal security. They were fantastic, Lieutenant Tony Snow and all of his reserve officers. But you can't have a concert without infrastructure. Guests in the Public Works, Mike Hilton, Court Barber, 100% supportive in this endeavor. Guests in Parks and Rec, Jen Withington, can't say enough good things about her, 100% support. Special thank you to the city of Rainbow City. They allowed us to borrow the power trailer that they use for Chocolate Festival to use on their site because there is no power in the area of the boat docks. Downtown Gaston, Ms. Kay Moore, Ms. Mary Wood worked tirelessly on this event. Local talent, Mr. Albert Simpson, <coughs> Lefty Collins started the show. Four in the Fire came in to open, Ms. Anna Popovich. And I can't say enough about John Chevalier and his crew for the stage, lighting, and sound. They did a fantastic job. It's a blessing to have that talent in our backyard. The days leading up to and the day of the concert, I'd like to name some people that took some special details there. Ms. Jen Withington, once again, every time I turned around, she said, what do you need? And it happened. Parks and Rec, we are blessed to have the team that we do in that department. Mike Hilton and Court Barber, amazing support. Days coming into the event was fantastic. Our electricians for the city, Opie Teague and Mike Bramlett, they made the electrical hookups happen with Alabama Power, coordinated everything. It was fantastic. Our EMS team that day, Assistant Chief Liesel Harrison, EMS uh, Supervisor Will Reed, were very instrumental in taking care of all the EMS support in case we had an event or an injury, and I'm glad to report we had zero incidents. Estimated the crowd that day at over 2,000. Our security detail was headed up by Sergeant Jerome Mitchell from the Gas and Police Department that evening and Lieutenant Tony Snow of the Edwell County Sheriff's Department. Once again, I want to thank Steve Gilbert for raising the funds for making this event happen. I want to thank the City of Gaston for providing the venue. Uh, Miss Tina King of King's Olive Oil took care of the backstage mama details and took care of everything with the entertainers. It was a pleasure to hear them say, do you guys think you'll, when I say, do you think you guys will come back to Gaston? And Anna Popovich said, actually, she said, come back, I think I want to live here. <laughs> This is an event that we held. It's the first ever time we've done a downtown music festival in the area that it was and the place that it was. And I personally think it was a huge success. So thank you for all of your support for this endeavor and thank you for the support of future endeavors. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Thank you. We appreciate it. And uh, I'll, I'll echo some of that sentiment. I appreciate you taking the time to highlight and capture several of the uh the folks that supported and committed to it you know we you know man, many of us call guests at home for various reasons you know some of us uh, are here because we didn't have a choice some of us are here because we chose to be here but at the end of the day it is refreshing always refreshing to see people who have a passion for their city and are willing to go out and support events like this um, you know i think uh, i think it's very telling that the city's role while meaningful wasn't necessarily the prominent role in developing this. Um, so we didn't, wasn't a whole lot of taxpayer money thrown at this event. So, uh, so it just says a lot about the organizing and the fundraising and all that went into it. So very good event, got a chance to attend it. And, uh, and I, you know, I, I didn't want to put you on the spot while you were standing there, but my goal is that it would be a, an annual event of some kind. 
you know, I, I'd, I'd like to see. Yeah, you can tell Steve I said that too. It, I like I like it to be an annual event. It's a, it's a great venue, and I think uh, you know it's something that uh, we had about 2,000 people there, and it'd be good to see, to see double that amount out next year. Okay, so all right, Miss Jackson, do you are you good? Amanda, nothing. Okay, all right. Thank you guys again, and, and Jen, thank you as well for the, for the Parks and Rec Department. Thank, thank and Kay, thank you for all that you do for sure. Remarks by the mayor and council. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We got Bobby, Mr. Cole, come on up. Thank you, Mr. Cole. Remarks by the K 
Council. Councilwoman okay. Tove. Yes, I have a, an announcement. The uh, Etowah County Democratic Women's Club, they're inviting you to, and this is everyone, on Thursday, May the 4th at 5.30 to Marana Park for a unity picnic. And they said, bring your family, dinner with us, and they'll have special prizes for, there'll be door prizes, and there'll be special prizes for the um, member that brings the most guests, and they'll have entertainment. Uh, probably I can address one or two. One of the things you said about the community associations, I believe that there are communities that have those associations. Some of them probably need to be activated, but they do exist in some communities uh, where there are neighborhood associations. The people just need to express an interest themselves. Uh, <clears throat> the other thing is uh, you talked about a biracial uh, committee. I'm not that, I'm not sure about that, but I'm gonna say this. I know four or five districts up here have community meetings. And at the community meet meetings, everybody in that district can come and express their concerns. They can give ideas, they can give suggestions, but we have you know, I, I have a nice crowd, but people that are calling you are not the ones that are coming to the community meetings. So I suggest that we announce when we have community meetings. Uh, they can come to the community meeting. They can express their concerns. Uh, they can talk about their wants and their dislikes, and we can address them up here as, if at all possible. Councilman Worthy. Yes. Well, you know, I'm all for the fire department and police department. I, I wish they could make more money. But the administration will have to do that, and then we can vote on it. So uh, because that's going to be a problem, and I don't think anybody's going to come here and make the kind of money that they make, and then after 25 years, you don't have any insurance because they won't pay for your insurance after 25 years of working. So, you know, I've talked to them about that, but... We haven't gotten anywhere. But I want to go to uh, Ms. Jen. You know, uh, my boys participated in the fishing rodeo when they were kids. And that's been going on for a long time. A lot of people said we don't have anything in this community, in this city for, for people to do. But there's a lot of stuff going on in the community. You know, they post it in the paper. I know a lot of people don't get the paper. But if you listen to the, uh, us up here, we talk about it. There's a lot going on in the community. People just have to get out and participate. You know, we had the concert over the weekend. We have one coming up this weekend. So uh, it's stuff to do. We got First Saturday coming up. I implore people to come, to come to First Saturday. You know, we have white people to come down there also. It's not just a black thing. Just like uh, First Friday is just not a white uh, person issue. You know, black people come, come up there, people of color. So uh, everything is not black and white. Everything is not about racism. We know we're not crazy. We know racism exists, and, it, and it's going to always exist till the good Lord come back. But that doesn't stop us. That doesn't stop anybody in our community from going over to Gaston City, getting a good education, getting a job. You can do whatever you want to do. You know, we have job fairs for people. So we are trying to do stuff. A lot of people in this community said that we're not doing anything. The, the council's not doing anything. Come to our community meetings and tell us what you would like for us to do. If you know how the city government works, we are strong mayor, weak council form of government. And the people that's on the, the radio, these talking heads that's talking, they, as long as they've been here in this city, they should know how the city works. We don't have any control over any personnel in this city, the council, except for that lady sitting right there. We vote on her. That's it. Ms. Ivan Nelson, the city clerk. That's the only person we have control of. Legally, we cannot say anything to any employee unless the mayor give us permission to. Legal. Yes, yes it is. We cannot tell them to do anything. Okay. So, but anyway, I want to thank the, the city for what we are doing. We are trying to uh, do a good job. We're not perfect, but we're going to continue to do what we do. If you all, you know, some people don't like it, you run for office. 
I implore you, it's, it's only $50 to sign it, the, the fee, the, the uh, register to run. That's all you have to pay, it's $50. Run. Thank you. Councilman Billingsley? No comment. Councilman Cannon? Yes, uh, I'd just like to uh, tell Mr. Cole, we have a, a community meeting in my district. It's the first Monday of every month down at Banks Park. It starts at 5 or 5.30. We have it done. I don't go a lot to them. Uh, I've got Mr. Bob Minard. He heads that one up down there. He lives down that way, and he can tell, tell me everything that goes. I probably go to half of them, and he does the rest. Now, because a lot of times when I'm there, they won't say a lot enough. You know? When I'm not there, they're going to tell you what they want what they need. And he call, either calls City Hall and communicates through them or communicates through me you know, to find out. What first they need. Monday. First Monday. Yes, first Monday, first Tuesday. We changed it. Depends on if there's a holiday, you know, it's the next day on Monday. So, yes, you can go by the uh, the gazebo in Alabama City and a sign that flashes up that tells you exactly when it's going to be that month. It's 5 or 5 30. And you was talking about uh, sign in bonuses. Uh, that'd be a good thing, but you never mentioned how much and how long the person has to stay here. To get that, I mean, I'm not for, in favor of giving somebody a thousand dollar sign on bonus and it goes to the fire academy or the police academy and quits the next week. You know, I'm not, you know, it goes to another town. I'm not for that, but I would look like look into it how much you would you would want. Yeah, and they'd have to stay a certain length of time or they'd have to pay that back, not just give somebody a, a sign on bonus and let them, you know, go. And that's about all I've got. Councilman Reed. Just sitting here listening to Robert and Kay, I got that letter about what three or four weeks ago that said they want anything to do with gas in Alabama. I think if you listen to just that part, they pretty well told you. That. But if you don't got nothing else to do, this is what I do. I go over to Walmart and sit and watch the people. I, I agree. You can't find else to do. Okay. I want to thank y'all for the Patriots got. Let you know what it was really, really good. Robert had a big part of that also. Uh, they had good money. Y'all were part of that. But I did want to let you know that it, it, the money goes toward the uh, the banquet in November where we honor the honoree that are, are voted into the Hall of Honor. We do the fireworks on July the 4th. The flags that you see up and down, Albert Reigns and Megan Boulevard and over at the courthouse and then possibly here. You're going to see a whole lot more. But it's money that goes for good stuff. The whole Lee Myers Park on the mountain, plus the museum. If, have that, any of y'all been to the museum? I mean, yeah, the Wild Patriots Museum in Mountain Park. You'd be surprised. It's an Octagon. Is it Octagon Shack? It's on for six Yeah, six, whatever. <laughs> it was, anyway, it's something we really see. It's something we sponsor. We keep up. But anyway, I just want to thank y'all for that. And May the 11th. Vietnam Wall will be here at 12 noon. We'll be doing the ceremonies, which will be short, and it'll be a very, very nice situation for veterans and their families. Could I ask Council Marie the question? Yes. For those people who would like to uh, have flags along the meridian that honor their uh, uh, veterans that are deceased, how could they go about getting a flag that would be a that would represent their uh, the veterans that are passed on the, in the their family. family. Yeah, they yeah. love ones. Glencoe, they love. Glencoe, Alabama, I know, does that. At the present time, we don't. Oh, okay. Ours are eight feet high, four by eight flags. They're too big. Uh, okay. We have dozens of handles there, so on and so forth. Okay. What I say you can do, the Patriots, we do offer the sign that every time we have a function or, or anything, that sign is in honor of the veteran. Okay. Your dad, your brother, whoever. And I think that's hard. All right, thanks, Councilman Reed. I, I think it's important to note also that Councilman Reed was educated in the Georgia school system, so if he uh, didn't know how many sides. <laughs> well, I tell you what I do, that's why I count on my face. I hear you. I'm going to, for anybody that's interested, I'm going to put up here some flyers that we, or some uh, brochures that we got this morning. Um, again, along the same lines of there's nothing to do in the city. There's there's some prominent landmarks and trails in the city. Uh, 
whether you're talking about wineries, golf, barbecue trails, Nakalula Falls, craft beer, um, Hallelujah Monuments, um, sacred trail locations, and of course, Nakalula Falls. Guys, I, I mean, again, I'm, I, I feel silly kind of putting these brochures up here, but I think the point is, is clear. There, there is, you know, your city and your hometown is what you make of it uh, to, to a large degree. And, uh, and I appreciate those who, you know, we're not all excited about everything that happens in our city, um, but, but at the end of the day, it's still our city. And so I think it's important for us to take every effort to, to make it as prominent and as pleasant as it can possibly be. So I want to thank those who, who do that. I want to thank those who actually go out and get involved and, and drive the effort to make sure that your city is as good as it can potentially be. And, and again, these are up here for people to look at, take. Uh, they're available in a lot of different places. And thanks to our tourism board and a number of the folks that actually do that stuff for us. A uh, reminder about the National Day of Prayer. Uh, that's uh, an event that's going to be held at the Downtown Civic Center uh, on uh, Thursday morning, May 4th. I think it starts at, registration starts at 7.30. The event starts at 8, I believe. So please, please go out and support that event. Um, and, um, and I think we'll have a, uh, a Supreme Court Justice there as the speaker. And I think that's it. Does anybody else have anything? Okay. If there's nothing else, I'd like to entertain the motion to adjourn. adjourn. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Marcia. That's uh, from uh, seven to eight is when it begins, and breakfast begins at eight. Is what you said? Program begins at eight. Okay. I do appreciate that. Okay. If there's nothing else, again, I entertain a motion that we adjourn. I'm on.